gazed into the void of paper, and I have seen the grand structure connecting all the types, the subvariants. All, all is part of one grand structure. Paper games, paper computer games. It is all branches from the same tree, and I today will tell you what those branches are. Join us as we look at the types of paper games, paper computer games, and other stuff. Let's do this. So some of this stuff is gonna be stuff that seems obvious to you. You might have already realized some of it already. Others, you might have just not even thought about, you know? Like a lot of this stuff goes by without thinking about it, which is sort of why I wanted to make this video to draw attention to this, because look, folks, there's a lot of types of paper games and paper computer games. We've sort of been putting them into one big category, like these are paper games, these are paper computer games, but there's a lot of variation there. And today I'm gonna be the zoologist of types of paper gaming, all right? So we're gonna categorize this. We're gonna, we're gonna sort out what kinds of games are what. So let's start right from the top. In the PCG side of things, we've got our core paper computer games. And this encompasses basically all paper computer games that just work the way a normal PCG works. Like you say what you're gonna do and the other person tells you if it works or not. That includes Chris's classic games, my games, Kurt's and Keith's and Pierre's, and most of your PCGs as well. This encompasses like the vast mass majority of most PCGs out there. But there's other styles of PCG as well. On the paper game side of things, meanwhile, you've got your classic Classic, I guess I'm just gonna call them controller games. I'm calling them that because these are like the style of paper games originally created by IPGS, the ones where you have to use a controller to move your character around and you've got like a paper console and stuff like that. I mean, this encompasses games by IPGS, by Keiko KT, by Reality Stupid, and many, many others. On the TCG side of things, you've got your baseline TCGs, which is once again, just most TCGs out there, they follow some rules. Both players have to know the rules and you play according to the rules. It's a trading card game, you know, like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, and so on and so forth, but homemade. Heading back over to the paper game side of things, we've got the flame spot style, I'm calling it. These are games that involve you tossing dice, using rules, using grids. Sometimes you even have to, you know, physically throw items onto the board. This is the style sort of like pioneered by flame spot, as far as I'm aware. So for that reason, I think it's fair to call this the flame spot style, even though not all flame spots games are in the flame spot style. We'll get to that a little later. Heading back in into PCG side of things, you've got your combat system PCGs. These are paper computer games that, you know, they're like a regular paper computer game, but they've also got a combat system attached to them, and that makes up a main component of the game. So like you're playing a PCG, but then once you get into a fight with an enemy, there's like suddenly HP and attack and, you know, different games can have different individual systems, but these combat system PCGs are a variation of PCGs where you use rules for combat like you would in D&D or other RPGs instead of traditional PCGing, where you just like say what you're gonna try to do to defeat an enemy. Next up on the paper game side of things, you've got paper RPGs, I'm calling them. These paper RPGs are basically things like Detuned World by Detuned Paper and OPRPG by Flamespot. These are basically like RPGs sort of in the sense of a video game RPG, maybe like one of the old Final Fantasies or Super Mario RPG, or um, there's a lot of examples that are more recent but regardless these paper rpgs are totally built on rules you don't move with a controller that's totally done away with it's just rules 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 and if you follow the rules you can play it by yourself as a single player this is a very playable kind of game and very rewarding for that reason whereas with a paper controller it visibly looks better if you're making a youtube video of it it looks really cool but you know it's harder to be fair with yourself and it's harder to really like fail the game but these paper RPGs are like playing a real video game RPG in a lot of ways but minus all the animations and in that sense it is very rewarding in that your imagination can fill in those animations just as well. Next up on the PCG side of things, this style of game is pioneered by Via. I'm pretty sure she is the only one to have ever made a game like this. It's for 
a one-page game she made. It doesn't have a title. I called it on the wiki Via's Zack PCG. In the game you play as Via, you have to talk to me, Zack. It's in Spanish, but that's not the point. The reason this is its own class of PCG is because you play in a different way. The game has like a very strict set of rules. You sort of can like try what you want, but the point of the game is you have to figure out what the rules are and you have to beat them. And the rules in that game are you have to ask Zach the right questions to get the right answers that you want, which is sort of a, a departure from traditional PCG gaming. And if you try and play it as a traditional PCG, it won't really work. You have to play by the rules. And if you don't know the rules, <laughs> you're gonna lose. So I feel like that qualifies as its own kind of PCG right there. Next up on the PCG side of things, we've got educational PCGs. Now, ordinarily, just any old educational PCG could be just folded in with the, you know, core PCGs category. It's just a PCG that happens to be about education, right? But VIA developed a whole new style of PCGs based around education. They're played differently than ordinary PCGs. You have to answer trivia questions in order to proceed. There's lots of little mini games. There is, to some extent, the ordinary PCG gameplay of like you say you're going to do a thing and then you find out if it happens, but it's not really built around that kind of puzzle solving. It's mostly just mini games and trying to answer trivia questions and solve little mazes and things like that. It's a very different style of PCG that we saw in Via's game Squirrels the PCG and Cows the PCG. And she has some other games planned as that as well. As far as I know, no one else has tried to make games in her style, but it really just shows Via's definitely got an inventive knack for finding her own take on PCGs, which is pretty darn cool. Now we have this kind of game, which I like to call Swamp Survival style games, because based on Swamp Survival by Detune Paper, I've heard the term imaginary paper games for them. It refers to the same thing. Basically, this actually is an interesting case because it's not super clear if it's a paper game or a paper computer game. It is definitely growing out of paper games. It's inspired by the tradition of paper games, but the gameplay is actually more like that of a paper computer game. And after I described what a paper computer game is, Detuned Paper even called these games, including Swamp Survival, paper computer games. So you could make an argument that they're paper games based on their lineage, or you could make an argument that they're paper computer games based on their gameplay. But either way, these games are interesting. They're played a little bit differently in that it's single player. Instead of playing with a player and a PCG master, you just say what you're going to try to do, and then you say what happens. So it's more like you imagining a scenario and then you playing through that scenario. It's less gameplay and more storytelling, more like creating a scenario to explore for yourself. Basically, most of these games, the format is you'll just have a big map with lots of locations to visit. And all the adventures you have there as you travel across this strange world you make up on the fly. In a lot of cases, the creator of the game doesn't even specify what's inside the factory or anything like that. It's all you. The map is basically just sort of like a launching pad for your own imagination. So in a sense, it's a lot like PCG gameplay, but one player. It really is the closest thing to a one player version of a paper computer game. It's freeform in that you can do anything you say you're going to do, in some ways, it's more like making up a story on the spot than it is like playing a game. But either way, it is certainly a unique experience. I've played through a couple of them here on this channel, like the original Swamp Survival. I have a long playthrough on that, as well as one of the Oregon Trail-based PCGs. Now, finally, coming back to the TCG side of things, we've got PCG TCGs. At first you might think, all right, it's just a trading card game based on paper computer game characters. So what, right? How is that a different type of game? It is because PCG TCGs kicked off by Yak Games in his Zuvac the trading card game and later carried on or at least dabbled in by others like Epic Games and so on. It's basically like a trading card game in that everything is on cards, but it is also a paper computer game. It follows paper computer game rules. Like you say what you're going to try to do, but it's sort of freeform as to whether it will or won't work. Now, how the specifics of this work out, we haven't really done enough PCG TCGing 
to really find that out. So there's a lot of experimentation to be done in that field. I think it would be personally be really cool if someone really devoted a lot of effort and time to like making PCG TCGs. Like I want to see the first PCG TCG devoted YouTube channel. I think that would be really cool. Like they're just constantly building up a PCG TCG or constantly talking about PCG TCGs in one way or another. Either way, really a fascinating idea. And I would love to see more PCG TCGs in general. In case I wasn't clear, you just say what you're gonna try and do and we decide what's gonna happen. At least the way we played it in Zuvac, the trading card game is both players sort of decide what makes sense as to what happens, which is a fascinating idea and something I haven't really seen before before. Next up on the paper game side of things, we've got the choose your own adventure style. This is pioneered by Anstari's Among Us story mode paper game. This is based on like the old choose your own adventure books, but turning it into a paper game with like paper graphics. Basically to play on the page, it'll tell you if you want to try to do this, turn to page number three. If you try to try to do something else, turn to page number seven, that sort of thing. So that is a really cool concept. I think like choose your own adventures really work as a paper game concept with that much graphics. I mean, technically like in terms of gameplay, there isn't really any difference between that and one of the choose your own adventure books, except that it doesn't really describe in detail what happens before the choice. It just draws it and then the choice, you know? So I guess that's the difference. It relies more on the person explaining it. Next up is what I like to call the Spell Forces RPG style. Now this is not exclusive to Spell Forces RPG. Epic Worlds also plays PCGs that are similar to this. First of all, it's sort of debatable whether it's a paper game or paper computer game. Epic Worlds would say his are PCGs. Spell Forces RPG would say they're RPGs, which might even be a separate thing. I don't know, but either way, the gameplay is similar enough that I can lump them into one thing. And basically the way this works is it's sort of like a PCG in that you say what you're going to try to do, but then in order to try to do it, you have to like roll dice, just like in Dungeons and Dragons. You know, like if you want to try to climb a wall, it's like you roll a die to see if you can get over it, that sort of thing. Now there's variation in this, at least from the way it looks in his videos. Spell Forces RPG, I think he plays them sort of solo. You know, you don't need like a PCG master necessarily. You just say, okay, I'll try to climb over the wall and then you roll the dice and see if it works or not. And that makes sense because like with the, with the rules and the dice, you don't, you know, strictly speaking, need one. Epic Worlds PCG does still play them with a PCG master and he plays with his friends that way. There's a combat system, but also, you know, you have to roll dice to see if you succeed at certain things. So this is sort of like an interesting hybrid of the paper computer game and paper game styles because it's got rules like a paper game or like a traditional RPG. But then it's also got the freeform part, kind of like PCGs, or I guess also like D&D. &D. Eh, I don't know. But yeah, those are all the types of PCGs, paper games, TCGs I could think of. I know I'm probably forgetting a ton of them, so please do let me know down in the comments what I forgot. Maybe I'll make another edition of this video and update this or something, or, may, or a sequel video. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do. Also, as for TCGs, Unfortunately, I just don't know much about TCGs. I only included two types of TCGs, unfortunately. That's a failing on my part. I haven't really taken as much time to explore the TCG world, the TCG universe, as it were, even though it isn't one big universe as far as I'm aware. So yeah, that is definitely something that if I were to make another video of this, I would like to expand on, like maybe more types of trading card games. So yeah, definitely let me know down in the comments, but that is all I've got to show you for right now. Thanks so much for watching you folks and Peace, see you later.